It's the Pirates and the Cubs on NBC Sports Chicago, home of the authentic fan. Final week of the regular season, seven games to go, and they'll all be here at Wrigley Field for the Cubs. They open up a four-game series against the fourth-place Pittsburgh Pirates. Great to have you with us, Jim Deshays and Len Casper, and the Cubs' magic number is five. The Brewers are in St. Louis starting a series tonight. We'll look at the pitching matchups in this series. The Pirates actually playing some pretty good ball as well. Pirates have won uh, 12 of their last 17 ball games. Their pitching has been really good. We take a look at the series matchup to see the Cubs numbers for the year. Hamill, Montgomery, Quintana, and Lester. Take a look on the other side of the page. You look at the starters for the Pirates in this series. DRA's Tyone, Puck 42, Archer 338, Nova 110. Trevor Williams, who's having a brilliant second half, has a 152. So it sounds easy. Go four and three. You force the Brewers to run the table, but this Pittsburgh club has really been pitching well. Well, the Cubs offense the last couple of days got it going on the south side. 15 hits in their win yesterday. It'll be the Cubs hosting the Bucks. Coming up, first pitch next. Brought to you in part by Lexus, who encourages you to experience amazing. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. Ford, who invites you to go further in their fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your local Ford store or buyfordnow.com. Menards, save big money at Menards. And by Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees. That's transparency. Now the Pirates Southwest starting lineup they have been eliminated not only from division contention but from postseason contention as well Adam Frazier will lead things off at second base Pablo Reyes uh, filling in in right field Gregory Polanco done for the year after left shoulder surgery Bell Cervelli Dickerson the mainstays in the middle Jose Osuna will play third base Jordan Luplo in center for the injured Starling Marte he's day to day Kevin Newman is at shortstop hitting eighth and Jamison Tyone the pitcher bats ninth. 
Cubs defensively this evening brought to you by BP. Kyle Schwarber will patrol left. Jason Hayward's in center. Ben Zobrist is in right. In field is Bryant. Baez, Murphy, Rizzo. Victor Caratini is behind the plate. And the Lexus Experience Amazing starting pitcher for the Cubs is the lefty Cole Hamels. He brings a 9 and 10 record for the season to the mound. This is start number 31. 4 and 1 with a 242 as a Cub. Coming off his first really a bad one in a Cub uniform suffered the loss last time out against the Diamondbacks a game in which he allowed seven runs and six innings of work. Alfonso Marquez D.J. Rayburn Sam Holbrook and Jim Wolf are tonight's umpires. It's 70 degrees a southeast wind at five miles an hour. Pleasant evening. A few sprinkles earlier today. And the 1 1 from Hamels and Frazier went around for strike two. This is Hamels' third start against the Pirates since joining the Cubs. He made his first start as a Cub in Pittsburgh and he went five innings, allowed one unearned run. He struck out nine in that ball game. The line in the 1 2 has lifted the left and it's foul and it will reach the seats. A couple weeks later he went seven scoreless in Pittsburgh. He goes fastball cutter he really backed off his cutter last time out against the Diamondbacks. I expect that to be in play more here tonight. Change up and curve all plus pitches across the board for the veteran Cole Hamels. Another one two on the way is outside. Frazier can hit lefties 304 in his career. Doesn't hit for much power though versus left handers one career home run. And a 2 2 swing and this got three 95 on the fastball. A high speed action is powered by Xfinity. Yeah Hamels certainly has enjoyed pitching at PNC Park. His debut was great and then it was double play night. The second time he faced the Pirates. One run allowed. It was unearned in those two starts. Pablo Reyes jumps on the first pitch. And he flies to Zobris. So it's a different look. Marte not in the lineup tonight. He's got an injured calf. Day to day could be available off the bench. Polanco, as Len mentioned, done for the year. Bernie Mercer is not in the lineup tonight. Josh Harrison not in the lineup. Now just to clarify, uh, Marte has an injured leg. He does not own a baby cow. <laughs> uh, at least that I know of. You just never know. Got to, got to clarify. He said he has an injured, injured calf. calf. He, he may have that too. He may have both. One to know on Josh Bell, switch hitting first baseman, batting from the right side. It conjures up images of Jaime, the robot from Get Smart. Folks of a certain age would remember. Okay. <laughs> a little before my yeah. time. Max would say, "Hop to it," and sure enough, Jaime go hopping across the room. Ball one strike. Cubs can clinch a playoff spot tonight if they win this game and the Rockies lose their game. They're hosting the Phillies a little later. They certainly have an eye on the Brewers and the Cardinals. They'll get started here in a few minutes. Milwaukee going with a bullpen start. Dan Jennings, the left hander. Jack Flaherty will go for the Cardinals. Two and two on Bell. So we're, we're basically we're into the last mile of the marathon now, right? Let's talk about the, the season being a marathon. One week to go. Way to about the, the last mile of a 26 mile marathon. At the end, everybody will get a sticker they can put on the back of their car. 162. 
Evans over his head. The 3 2 bounce toward the middle and into center for a base hit. Ball came in at 317 here in September. Yeah, Bell, Frazier, Dickerson's been swinging it well. Uh, a lot of these guys have not done a whole lot against left handed pitching, especially in the power department. So it's a pretty good matchup for Hamels here tonight. Pats have been playing winning baseball in the last two or three weeks. They've won 12 of their last 17, mostly because their pitching has been so good. A little bit below NL average, 4.29. Runs per game for this offense. And Francisco Cervelli takes a strike. They don't strike out much. Second lowest strikeout rate in the league. Cervelli has been good when he's been healthy. He's been on the DL twice with concussion issues and he just pummeled one to left. It is hooking. It is fair. It's onto the street. And it's a two run homer for Cervelli. So that is the fifth home run surrendered by Cole Hamels in his last three starts. Two nothing. And it's the fourth consecutive start in which he has allowed a long ball. And prior to that, he had not allowed any since joining the Cubs. That's what bit him in Texas. He gave up a lot of home runs with the Rangers. Of course, that ballpark in Arlington is very hitter friendly. It looked like they're trying to throw a cutter in on his hands, and Savelli was wise to it. Quick, short stroke gets the barrel there. And it seems like he's done a good bit of damage against the Cubs. He has our Ford home run replay. Savelli came in hitting 387. Against the Cubs this season. So all this happening after two are out. A single by Bell, a homer by Cervelli, and now Corey Dickerson takes outside. And Hamill started in Arizona. The Diamondbacks uh, they ran a, a different looking lineup out there against them and sat down a bunch of their mainstays. But they ambushed them. They put a four spot on him in the first. Weird game. He really settled in nicely. After that, through five, he had not allowed anything else, and then they jumped him again in the sixth. Three balls, no strikes. It's the fourth home run that Cervelli has hit against the Cubs this year. Got 12 on the season. Three-zero swing, and Dickerson fouls it out of play. Two hits and a run in each of his last three games. It's pretty. It's been a pretty low-scoring season series. These teams have combined over the first 15 games. To average seven runs per contest as Dickerson takes the walk. Cubs have won eight of the first 15. The uh, four game series in Pittsburgh in mid August, remember the Cubs hit a solo home run for their only run in each game. They've scored seven runs against the Pirates four times, and seven times they've scored one run. The Pirates have scored six runs or more four times against the Cubs and have been shut out on four occasions. Outside corner on Jose Osuna. Typically this would be a David Freeze start against the lefty but he got traded to the Dodgers on the final day of August. Two. Runner at first, two outs, opening inning. And Ozuna with a soft liner that'll be run down by Zobris. Cervelli with a two-run shot. 
And the Cubs are coming up against right hander Jamison Tyone when we return. And good to be back home on the north side. Their southwest starting lineup. Daniel Murphy had an excellent road trip. So did Ben Zobris. Javier Baez coming off a three homer week. It's Rizzo cleaning up. Schwarber in left batting fifth. Bryant returning to the lineup hitting sixth. Jason Hayward in center batting seventh. It's Hamels eighth and the catcher Victor Caratini ninth. Ready to go. Tyone with a pitch. Murphy lines back to the mound. And Tyone able to knock it down and throw him out. Well, big Jamison Tyone having a very nice year for the Pirates. 13 wins against nine losses, a 3.24 ERA. He's made 20 consecutive starts, allowing three earned runs or fewer. He uh, comes at you with a heater that averages 95 miles per hour, curve, slider, and change. By the way, the leadoff man is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. And when the Cubs leadoff man gets a hit in the first, Benny's donates $100 to the Greater Chicago Food Depository. One strike on Ben Zobras. Now one and one. Yeah, that's, he was fastball and curve change. He's added the slider, and that's become a very important weapon for him. Something he can command a little bit better than the curveball. Six five two twenty. He was twenty six years of age. With a lot of confidence, you would have to believe his last six starts, he is 4 0 with a 1.66 earned run average, and the Pirates have won all six of those ball games. He has run it full on Sobris. He has five hits over his last two games. To Newman. So uh, take a look at the Pirates defensively. It's brought to you by BP Dickerson. They really like the work he's done out in left field this year. Luke Lowe plays center tonight. Pablo Hayes, not at the bottom of the pool, but in right field. Osuna Newman, Frazier Bell on the infield. Francisco Cervelli having a very nice year controlling the running game behind the plate. Hobby steps in with 34 home runs. League best 110 knocked in. And the 
foul right at the plate. 326 total bases. That leads the league. He's got 81 extra base hits. Pacing the NL. Bouncer to third, handled by Osuna. And Tyon works a quick one, two, three opening inning. At the end of one, it's the Pirates two and the Cubs nothing. If you're wondering if the Cubs have any celebrations planned for whether or not they clinch a playoff spot here this evening, Joe Madden with a witty response before the game saying, I don't know, I wasn't part of any party planning committee. He'll leave that up to Angela, Phyllis, and Pam. Of course, his office references we've heard plenty, but that is the mindset of this team, guys, not permitting themselves to think past a win tonight. John Lester saying a couple days ago, you can't get ahead of yourself. Two and a half games up and two good teams chasing them. And a lot of baseball to be played this week. But, gentlemen, I think that really speaks to the high standards this group has for themselves. No celebrating a playoff berth. Rather, all eyes on that division title. So that's what's going on in the clubhouse right now with that vibe. Thank you, Kelly. Jordan Luplo swings and misses on a changeup. It's one and one. He's won for his last 23. He turned 25 on Wednesday. Pirates lead on a Francisco Cervelli first inning two run homer. Luplo has got some uh, pop in that bat. He has not had a lot of success at the big league level yet. Limited time. He had 87 plate appearances last year. Hit 205. Oh. 85 at bat so far this year, carrying a buck 88 batting average. But, but good power numbers throughout his minor league career last year. At three stops, double A, triple A in the big leagues combined, he had 26 long balls. Corner outfielder. By trade, he hits one right to Schwarber. Luplo making his first career start in center. Well struck, young man. Now go have a seat. And we'll bring up the shortstop, Kevin Newman. Jordy Mercer, due to be a free agent. Getting a look at Newman. He made his major league debut against the Cubs on August 16th. Played defense and pinch ran in three games in that series, but did not bat. Backhanded play on the outfield pass. Baez throws to first in plenty of time. 
Yeah, Newman, a scrappy sort who can run a little bit. He's quickly unloads. Two outs, it's the pitcher tie on. Four night games against the Pirates, and three matinees against the Cardinals to put a wrap on the regular season. Fouled upstairs. The Cubs are convinced that Tyone's going to pull Hamels here. Check out where Jason Hayward is playing. I don't know that I've ever seen a center fielder and a right fielder in such close proximity. Cole not taking much time between pitches. No, I think the players love playing behind him because he gets it and goes. His motion to two is hit on the ground to Baez. One, two, three, second inning for the lefty. Still two zip. Pittsburgh. This is awful. That's disgraceful. That's a horrible, horrible sequence. <laughs> that is our built for baseball brought to you by T Mobile. A wild pitch scored three runs yesterday as the Brewers beat the Pirates. It was disgraceful. That's what that was. Anthony Rizzo leads off and fouls away. It's hard to do. Um, yeah, has anybody dug in on that? How many times has that happened in baseball? I imagine history? very often. 13 6 was the final score. There's Michael Feliz on the mound, Elias Diaz behind the plate. Numbers for Big Rez against the guy they call JMO. 
And Rizzo and Baez in particular knocked him around. Hit pretty well out into left center. Slicing drive will be caught by Dickerson. And, uh, Tyler will give you some pitches to hit. He's very aggressive. He, he throws a lot of pitches in the strike zone, especially early in the game as he tries to set the tone and be efficient. The Cubs have had some pretty good whacks at him here. They hit the ball sharply three times, nothing to show for it. Kyle Schwarber yesterday. At the White Sox, two for two, a homer, a double, two walks, two runs. Carlos rolled down. He went 4.44. Should say two RBIs, one run, and a homer. Yeah, it was good the day before too. His OPS at 845 ranks second on the club. And then just Javier Baez. Slugging up over 480. Takes a ton of walks. In between there, but he did hold. It's three and one. Oh, here you go. Pull out the driver. Step and throw from Tyone. It's low. It's ball four. Cubs have a base runner for Chris Bryant. His 97th game this year, over 150 in each of, each of his first three seasons. Two DL stints with the left shoulder. Takes a strike. The shoulder had some fatigue, so he sat out yesterday. Center and out to get it and make the catch is Frazier. So two outs, it will bring up Jason Hayward. Trail 2 0 in the Francisco Cervelli first inning home run. Runner at first, two outs here in the second. Oh! At the outside. So Tyone has two more starts, I'm trying to notch a 14th win if he gets it. That'll give the Pirates two 14 game winners for the first time since 1992. It'll be Williams and Tyone, the last tandem to have at least 14 wins in a season. Doug Grayback and Randy Tomlin in 92 under Jim Leland. Could have come up with Drayback fairly quickly. It would have taken a while to pull Randy Tomlin out of the hat. Foul to first. Looks like the Pirates will play 161. And they have a game on the schedule next Monday against the Marlins, a makeup game, but both teams are out of playoff contention, so it doesn't look like that one will be made up. Right to the shortstop. That'll take Newman to the bag at second. 
And the Cubs done in inning number two. They strand one, they trail two zip. Over 400 locations and 6,300 top doctors. Book your same day appointment at advocatehealth.com. As you enjoy a Miller Light, look forward to the whole true moment later in tonight's game. I always look forward to that. That's always yeah. highly anticipated. Mm -hmm. Second time. The order for Cole Hamels, Frazier, Reyes, and Bell. Frazier in his third big league stint this year. Looks like he's here to stay. We've got a club option on Josh Harrison for next year, but it sounds like that will not be exercised. And Frazier looks to be ready to take over at that position next season. Yeah, very good offensive player. He's not a big guy, but he's got power. Well put together. Defensively, he's just so so. I heard a uh, comp today as he was hitting prowess as a young Daniel Murphy. Well, we'll see. That's, that's, that's a pretty big uh, high bar, but. Um, can understand the comp high average hitter who is starting to develop power. Make a play. Coming in. Brian Braun is homeward for the Brewers. They lead the Cardinals one to nothing in the middle of the second. And as you mentioned earlier, the Brewers use Dan Jennings of the bullpen as their opener. And we're talking literally the opener. He, he pitched a third of an inning through three pitches. Before they made a change. I think after Matt Carpenter, they're pretty right handed. Tonight as Frazier strikes out, that's the second time he has fanned against Hamels. He's going to have to tighten that up if he wants to be Daniel Murphy. Yeah, so they went from Jennings to Freddie Peralta. He's mainly worked as a starter, so. Should be able to give them a few innings tonight. And as I look at their lineup after Matt Carpenter, they are all right handed. So who knows? Maybe the, the first out of the game is the biggest. Yeah. Right? The, the Craig Council's thinking, let's keep Carpenter in the ballpark. And say thank you to Dan Jennings and then move on from there. And again, you can do this in September with the expanded rosters with all the extra. Bullpen arms trickled up along the third base line foul by Reyes, who's appearing in just his 13th 
Major League game. Reyes at the triple A. 289 batting average, 341 on base, 435 slug. He's got a little power. Steal a bag. Another very big guy. Uh, hands real high. Almost like a right handed version of Craig Council with that batting stance. Strike three. Everybody in. The Cubs need everyone's support during these final games of the regular season. Tickets are still available for the next three consecutive night games with the Pirates. Get your tickets now at Cubs.com. Bell kept the first inning alive for the Bucks with a single. It was followed by the Cervelli homer. And he pops it up on the infield. Hamill's looking for some help. And it's Rizzo in the front of the mound to end the inning. Seven straight retired by Cole Hamill's 2 0 Pirates. Live team stats on your TV. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1. JD does with his phone in the booth every day. And we'd like to welcome all our viewers watching NBC Sports Chicago on Central Scott Telephone's CSTV service in Eldridge, Iowa. And also, a big welcome to our viewers watching on MLB Network tonight. You are the selfie king. What did I do? You're always posing for photos in the booth. Turn off your Instagram for two minutes. 2 0 on Cole Hamels. Looks hitterish. Fouled off. 2 and 1. Pass at the 2 0 heater. And batting a dollar five this year. Here. What do you think? Take one here? Yeah. I'm guessing he'll swing if it's right down the middle. He does, and he hits a drive out in the deep center. Gone! Swings the bat. Cubs on the board. 
That's his second career homer. That old adage, anybody with a bat in their hand is dangerous, and Hamels is competent, better than most pitchers when it comes to swinging the lumber. Got a 3-1 fastball and jumped all over it. That's a wow. He All set up Matt Kane, July 21st, 2012. Tonight it's off tile. Two pretty good pitchers he's yeah, homered off. Yeah, and you know, he had that good swing at the 2 0 fastball and found it down the left side, and that time he got the head out in front. Ford home run replay. Caratini bounces out to first. Statcast AI powered by AWS. Man, 437. Just a little bit short of uh, Schwarber's yesterday. Two one ball game. Murphy takes blowing in. So he joins John Lester, who also homered this year. Me think about home run totals by Cubs pitchers the last few years. You know, they had Jake Arrieta, uh, Travis Wood. I'm guessing the two homers this year below what they've done the last three or four as a uh, as a group. Dickerson on the move, and he will make the running catch on a good jump. He's been very good out there. The reputation coming in was not so sterling for Dickerson defensively, but really been impressed. He's made just one error, and sometimes that doesn't tell the whole story. Normally it doesn't. But yeah, it's a big left field they have to cover at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. He's done a very nice job. The events metrics seem to like him. In there on Zobrist. Back to the pitcher tile. So the Cubs have one hit off this stingy right hander, and it belongs to Cole Hamels. 400 foot home run. And it's two to one.
The first pitch will be at 7.05, and fans who buy tickets through the Community Nights page will receive a special Cubs hat in DePaul University colors. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com slash Community Nights. Couple of home runs tonight. Cervelli in the first, knocked in two. Hamels in the third, knocked in himself. So we play the fourth inning, and it will be Cervelli. Takes on the inside corner for a strike. Cervelli appears not to agree with Alfonso Marquez. His previous career high was seven home runs. He's only got 12. Question was, was it going to stay fair? Trying to get one in on his hands, just didn't get it in there. He will take walks. This is the 90th start by Cubs left hander. That's a new single season record for the team. 66 club, 89 starts from lefties. He comes with 2 2. Put in the hands and fouled away. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do uh, on the home run pitch. Uh, cutter up and in. This time he did get it in. Now you got to stay committed to the approach, even if you make a mistake. Backdoor cutter here. See uh, Cole's looking in at Caratini, kind of tilting his head, saying, Let's go away here. Backdoor cutter, big weapon for him. It's a key pitch for John Lester as well. Change up, took it for ball four, and that's a leadoff walk. First start in a Cub uniform was against the Pirates in Pittsburgh back on August 1st. He struck out nine. He had an outstanding changeup working that night. Play Dickerson a step or two the other way in the outfield. Hits a lot of balls to left center and left. I would think he'd be more inclined to do so with a left handed pitcher on the mound. A fly to left. Schwarber is there. Don't miss your chance to experience spring training at beautiful Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. Reserve your place in line by joining the spring training season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy and free to register. For details, visit sloanpark.com. Osuna 0 for 1. Playing third base tonight. He's been on the uh, big league AAA shuttle all year. This is his fifth stint with the Pirates. Up and back and forth between Pittsburgh and their Triple A club in Indianapolis. Posted very good numbers there 321 with 26 doubles, nine home runs. That's the change up. Uh, Bryce Harper just accomplished something he had never done 
in the big leagues. This is his seventh season. Going to take a guess. The, uh, the, uh, You'll be surprised because I was. He had never done this. That's past Bryant. Cervelli to third, and he'll stop there. It's a double for Osuna. And the Pirates have runners at second and third with only one out. He went from first to third, and his helmet did not fall off. No. <laughs> think bigger. Think he did something this Three season. Three home runs in a game. No. He 40 doubles. Nope. Oh. Knocked in 100. Oh. He this never is his in first 100 RBI season. Wow. That is Does that surprising. not surprise you? Yeah. Uh, with all the firepower that the club has had over the years, and probably they take the bat out of his hands a lot. Yes, right. A lot he of walks, walks a lot. men on base. Yeah. Jordan Luplo with a corner man pulled in. They are back at second and short. I think Hamels, by and large, has done a terrific job. In these types of innings, with the other team threatening with fewer than two outs, and not letting them get a run. Well, you like his chances. Luplo hit the ball very hard last time, but he's been struggling. He's down at the bottom of the batting order here with some inexperienced guys, so hopefully he can exploit that. He's got a base open here, so I think he's going to work out of the zone, try to get him to chase, looking for the punch out here. And if he loses him, so be it. And he's got the light hitting shortstop Newman and then the pitcher, Kyle. That, that pitch was a little more aggressive than I would have expected. Is playing at a depth where he definitely can throw home with Cervelli running. Doesn't matter. Call strike three. Out number two and a big one. Backdoor cutter, it appeared never to get to the outside edge, but Hamill's got the goal. Caratini was sitting out there. Sure looks good at the end. Newman Rizzo now walking in and it's a possible two out bunt strike call Alfonso is going to be pretty generous in and out tonight and we we'll ought to be able to exploit that Pitcher on deck, Tyone. Well, Jason Hayward shading towards right center and shallow again, almost like he was with Tyone up there last time. Really playing Newman as an off field hitter. Bounced off the plate and fouled into the Cubs' dugout. Two balls, two strikes. This is huge here. The way Tyone's been throwing the baseball, especially over his last six or seven starts, count on getting a whole bunch of runs off of him.
Cubs have been great at home. 37 and 27 on this final stage. Crowd into it. And I want Hamels to get out of it. And in the air, this will get Hamels out of the fourth. Pirates strand two in scoring position. And it's still two to one. trailing by a run Kyle Schwarber due up this inning and just a few days ago the crosstown opener Schwarber with a funny exchange with reporters after the game going over for a couple strikeouts and he said hey I felt like my timing was getting better each at bat and then with a huge grin said so I'll probably be ready to go tomorrow well since saying that guys four for five four walks and a couple RBIs and then with a big grin this morning to me said so I wasn't joking. I, I was praying I wasn't joking, but I really wasn't. And Schwarber just saying things have certainly slowed down for him at the plate. And guys, his back right now, this entire team knows how huge that is for lengthening the lineup if he continues to stay hot. Thanks, Kelly. Absolutely. And right now, when you look at Murphy, Zobris, Baez, Rizzo, Schwarber, Bryant, Hayward, and if they're all quote at their best or at their very good is a very intimidating stretch of uh, guys I was talking on the radio today about what this Cubs team has been this year J.D. and it's not what certainly I expected maybe a lot of people expected in terms of how it really lived and died with the home run Bias has 34 but before the season if I said over under on 25 homer guys you probably would have said four or five right. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, injuries has played a part in that, but also a philosophy. I mean, the change of hitting coaches from uh, John Maley, who was a big proponent of launch angle and you know, working a deep count and trying to get a ball you can drive out of the ballpark, which is not, you know, it's not an unsound hitting philosophy. But I think the Cubs just wanted a little different approach where they're trying to emphasize using the whole field, hitting more line drives. Um, so yeah, and I, and I don't. It's it's an interesting debate to have. Whether this approach is better than the other approach, one may set you up better in the postseason. I think that's some of the thinking. You get into uh, postseason with some of the elite arms you see, the ability to put the ball in play uh, against guys throwing 97 miles per hour coming out of bullpens in the fourth inning as opposed to the seventh inning matters, I think. Well, I've led the league in batting average for much of the year. I take walks. 
Baez 34, Schwarber 26, Rizzo 24, and then after that, Ian Happ with 15 home runs. So it's go going to be uh, interesting just just to watch the the industry as a whole. Uh, with so much velocity in the game now, if, if the approach starts to change it, the Braves have had success being very aggressive. They're, they attack early. That's been a big part of Christian Yelich's story this year. First pitch damage. Joey Votto, Matt Carpenter, more aggressive early than than he used to be. Rizzo's hit a bunch of first pitch home runs. For Yelich, his walk rate's down a little bit, but still 9.2 percent, which is above major league average. So you get quality first pitch swings, and he still takes his walks. Yeah, that's the Votto story too. And a lot of people you were surprised to see Votto swing at first pitch as often as he does. You just assume, oh, he's a patient guy. He's up there. He's going to take some pitches. No, he, he's looking to hit, willing to walk. And that's that's what you're looking for. It's Anthony's M.O. as well. Two strikeouts for Tyone and both coming here in the fourth inning. Baez looking. And Rizzo swinging. And he'll bring up Schwarber. Cardinals have tied the Brewers 1-1. One, one. Carpenter just knocked in a run with a double. Freddy Peralta. I think the new paradigm is going to be with the opener. And every pitcher is going to want to be the second guy to pitch because he'll have a chance for a win. This could drop and it won't. Sliding catch, Corey Dickerson. That's a nice play by Dickerson to get Schwarber. They're having a nice, polite chat before the game, but I don't think Kyle's real happy with him right now. 2 1 Pittsburgh after four. Experiences here at Wrigley Field. The seats featuring prime views and access to an exclusive club and first class amenities. These new premier experiences will allow fans to enjoy Cubs baseball and America's most majestic ballpark in a whole new way. Visit CubsPremier.com to join the premier client priority list. Two one ball game. Fifth inning. Nine, one and two for the visitors starting with the pitcher Tyone. And he takes outside for ball one. Yeah that was interesting the way Hamels worked at that fourth inning second and third one out he had seven eight nine and instead of kind of tiptoeing around seven and eight he went right after him and now he's got the pitcher to lead off 
the fifth. It's a bit of a risk. One of those guys punches a base hit somewhere, and all of a sudden it's a four to one ball game. Joe Madden trusted his veteran left hander to navigate the choppy waters, and he did. Cole is from San Diego. Tyone was born in Lakeland, Florida, but he grew up in the Woodlands, Texas. It's in the Houston area. Two balls, two strikes. Go ahead, say it. Where all children are above average. And they're required to say that whenever the Woodlands is mentioned. All the women are strong, all the men are good looking, and all the children are above average. Oh, three and two on Tyone. Wasn't Cole Hamels the valedictorian of the senior class? That sounds right. Two bounces right to Murphy. Rancho Bernardo High School, I believe. Frazier has struck out both times. That's a band, right? I'm going with that. That's a band. Yeah. Monday night they don't have a gig. It's the Edgewater Blues Band. Coming to the coming to the yard. Watch some hardball. Frazier just looking for contact. A couple of punch outs so far. Baez drifts out. Hayward comes in. I'll be always having fun on the yard out in the middle of the diamond. You got to envision it, right? Let's pop up, he'll catch it. And he's practicing the, the maneuver. Swing and a miss by Reyes. Catch the end of the Bears game last night? Uh, I did not. Able to hang on after coming back. Big win there in first place. Good lineup. Oh, the NFL, it's just it's so hard to predict right now. It is. First and Bears both in first. Has been terrific after that Cervelli homer. He's been lights out 2 1 in the fifth.
Chicago.com presented by Nationwide Agent Jeff Vukovic. Go to JeffVuk.com or follow him on social media. Nationwide is on your side. Chris Bryant fouls away as the Cubs bat here in the fifth inning. 2-1 Pittsburgh. And Tyone got away with a little bit of a sloppy breaking ball there on 0-0. Necessarily looking to snap off a nasty one. You're trying to find the zone, but he's a little bit up. He's got multiple looks with his breaking ball. He's got you know the big curve ball, and he threw it really hard. And the slider, and then uh, that little cutter too. We're seeing it uh, 89 to 92. The Pirates will finish with a winning record against. The NL Central for only the second time since this division was created in 1994. They're currently 39 and 30. They went 12 and 7 against Milwaukee. And Bryant strikes out. 12 and 4 so far against the Reds. They'll finish the season in Cincy. And 7 and 8 currently against the Cubs. Kind of the opposite of, of the Reds. The Reds have a really good looking lineup these days as you contemplate next year. Uh, suspect in the pitching department, the Pirates just the opposite. Uh, this rotation really coming together, but position player wise, they're a little bit short. I mean, if you could combine the two, you'd have a really good team. Well, I'm reading uh, Jeff Perlman's USFL book. That's what they did in 1986. <laughs> merging teams. Yeah. That ladder will get in there for Hayward. The Cubs have their second hit and a base runner for their home run guy, Cole Hamels. Did Joe Madden have the nerve to ask him to drop down a sacrifice here for that bomb he hit last time? This pitch up and Hayward has to work to get to it and just able to muscle it over the head of Frazier out there in the shallow right. Osuna ready to charge from third and tie on. Yeah, the right first. A little butcher boy here. Slug button try to chop it by Osuna. Show bunt early and tice him in and then try to slap it by him. Field with the signs Venable in the air of Hayward down at first base. Woo! Slider at 90. Uh, almost upsetting. Good offer at it. One and two. For me, the biggest flaw in the sacrifice bunt. Is the taken strike. First, and Hayward dives back in safely after Hamels strikes out. Number three for Tyone. Number four for Tyone. Yeah, good heads up play by Cervelli. He knows Hayward's trying to get an aggressive secondary there. Hamels comes up empty, quickly snaps out. Goes to the back corner to avoid the tag. Hector Caratini. Go for one. Make it one for two. And Hayward will have to stop at second. Uh, 
couple of guys on with two outs for Murphy. A couple of hard hit balls for outs early in the ball game. A couple of softies here for Knox. Daniel for two tonight came in with eight hits over his last four starts. And he was one of the hard outs. Bottom of the first. And a rocket back to the mound. Uh, I don't knock it down and threw him out. See how hard they push Hayward if uh, Murphy singles here. Hayward not that far removed from that hamstring strain. Ground ball. Knocked down Newman. He will throw behind the Hayward at third. And fortunately, Jason stuck right on the bag. So an infield hit for Murphy. The bases are loaded. And the batter will be Ben Zobras. Yeah, this is good baseball play right here. Good play. Uh, Newman keeping it on the infield. Hayward picks up Butterfield, and Butter was charging the bag, pointing, letting him know do not take a step beyond third base here. This play, you've got to keep the ball in the infield. Newman hoping for the aggressive turn. Big spot for Zobris. Three singles here in the fifth. And a base hit to the outfield could give the Cubs the lead. Well hit it on a line to shortstop first time. Comebacker last time. Like his chances. 429. The base is loaded this year. Gretz finds a little something extra. Dials up 97. JD mentioned the work here recently by Tyone. Been tough to score on. Eight, six of the eight runs allowed now over his last seven starts have come via the solo homer. So he has not given up many run scoring hits. In, man, he's not chasing bad balls. You really have to execute to get him out. Ground ball, Bell's got it, and he will beat Zobris to first. And the Cubs leave the bases loaded. Three hits, but cannot convert 2 1 after five.
some new Cubs to showcase what it means to be a Cub for life. You see the photo from a custom birth announcement on the Wrigley Field marquee. Cubs birth certificate, pinstripe baby cap, and rookie of the year Cubs onesie. Visit Cubs.com slash kids for more information. Sixth inning of action. It's two to one Pirates. Only runs have come on a couple of homers one by each team. Cubs about hit him four to three. Neither club has committed an error in this ball game. Josh Bell one for two with a run. Takes a strike on a curve. Cubs bullpen well rested. Kyle Hendricks went seven and two thirds yesterday. Jorge De La Rosa finished the ball game, so everybody else got a little breather. Disappearing changeup. Bell's home runs are down. He had 26 last year. He's got 11 this year. He's hit for a higher average, a higher on base percentage as well. He's got 31 doubles. He's a big, strong guy. He hits the ball on the ground a lot. He hits a lot of ground balls, hits it on a line. Be interesting to watch as his career evolves if he starts to lift the ball a little bit more. And obviously, if he does, you would expect the power numbers to spike. Swing and a miss on the changeup for strike three. Hamels now has six strikeouts. He's been fooling hitters with this pitch for a long time. Over the course of his career, if you you play that game where you're going to build the perfect pitcher, you know, this guy's fastball, this guy's breaking pitch, this guy's makeup. A lot of times the Cole Hamill's changeup would have been part of that formula. Cervelli has hit the two run homer and walked. Recently battling some stomach issues. Mentioned the concussions earlier this season. One and one. Be hard pressed to take anybody's change up over Kyle Hendricks in the game right now. There's another one from Hamels. And Cervelli this one to Bryant. And the throw bounces out of play. So Cervelli will end up at second base. He'll get an infield hit. And Bryant will be charged with a throwing error, allowing him to go to second. Cervelli doing it to the Cubs again. On base all three times tonight. Home run walk now single. This time soft contact, but it turns into an infield hit, and he gets an extra 90 feet with the errant throw. And now it's Dickerson. Yeah, Cervelli has definitely been that thorn on the Cubs' side this season. Uh. Strike. Since homers are down, doubles pretty consistent, at least 33 each of the last three seasons. He's running 297, doesn't walk a ton. Mississippi native 
Corey Dickerson. It's actually his middle name. His first name is McKenzie. Swing and a miss. A pitch way out of the zone. One and two. Well, you mentioned he doesn't walk much. The guys who are aggressive are going to be even more so with a runner in scoring position. Spread out, try to use his hands here. So you got a guy who likes to shoot the ball the other way who's in two strike mode spreading out emphasizing hands doesn't want to get fooled by the breaking ball pitcher you feel like you could probably get the ball in on his hands you can jam him with velocity here and maybe get the chase back upstairs this will be the Cubs first mound visit as Caratini and Hamels will get together. Right to left, not very hard. Very pleasant night, 70 degrees as we got started. Big crowd. That should be the case the rest of the way. Dickerson able to stay alive. I see Caratini uh, with a deke there holding the glove up high as if they were going to go with an ele elevated fastball and they threw the slider down and away. And that was as much for Cervelli as for anybody in case Cervelli's trying to tip off Dickerson what's coming because you would never put your glove up there if you were intending on throwing a breaking pitch. So I thought Cervelli was letting Dickerson know what was coming. They wanted to kind of cross him up a little bit to inside heater. But Close enough to get him to bite. A kick in the two two swing and a miss. He struck him out. That gives him seven on the night. On left change. Yeah, and this ball has a little cutting action. It almost looks like a slider. Jose Osuna. Double down the left field line in the fourth. Melly reached on an infield hit and an error. Up, Hamels will get one more start. It'll be this weekend against the Cardinals. Mike Montgomery will take the ball tomorrow night. We'll give 
the Pirates an insurance run as Cervelli will score. Osuna will stop at second with another double. It's three to one. Osuna having himself a night. First time up, he hit the ball sharply, lined out to right field, and a pair of doubles, one down each line. Backdoor breaking ball here. Catches a good bit of home plate and now belt high. The Cervelli home run came with two outs. This RBI double comes with two out. Good clutch hits for the Pirates tonight. Murphy raced in behind Osuna. And Hamill stepped off. Uh, that's the other part of it too. Uh, the gamesmanship if, if you're worried about a guy in second base tipping off the hitter as to location or what might be coming keep him engaged by. You know, ducking in behind him as a fielder, try to keep keep him distracted. Remember Hobby earlier this year when he stood in front of the base runner? Mm -hmm. DJ LeMahieu. Yeah. Right? One and one. Ball over on the south side tonight. The Indians and the White Sox are scoreless in the middle of the fifth. So the White Sox had to deal with Lester, then Hendricks. Tonight they're getting Corey Kluber. Nil nil, middle of the fifth. Two balls, two strikes. Played late last night. Beat the Red Sox 4 3 and 11. Two teams have already clinched their divisions. Indians and the Pirates are staying at the same hotel here in town. Full count on Luplo. Go over and hang out in the lobby tomorrow, see if I can score some autographs. If I can get a Carl Willis, that'd make my day. A Bob Walk and a Carl Willis. Yeah. We should bring a camera crew over there. Hang out and try to get autographs. I'd be curious to know how many guys in their street clothes you'd recognize. Not many. I mean, I know it. I go. That's a ball player. They have a, there's a look. Right. I might not be able to tell you which one. When mm -hmm. I see the guy walking through the lobby with his sunglasses on. That would be the first tip. Okay. There's second base. A run in. A three-two count. And the center fielder Luke Low. Hamels home fouled upstairs into the press box. Well, you know, same thing applies this time around with Luke Low as last. There's a base open, and here it's a little bit later in the ball game. So one more run, more meaningful in this situation. So you've got to be a little bit careful here. And again, you know, Luke Low doesn't have a great resume, but look at his minor league numbers. He's got some power. Playing center because Starling Marte's got a calf issue. Popped up 
and it will be Baez behind second to make the catch. It is an unearned run, and it's now 3-1 Pirates. Brought to you by AARP. 10 out of 18. And a couple of long ones. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Bounce out to third. And a strikeout. 94. And in on the hands. Uh, Statcast talks about something that they call a perceived velocity. And I would assume that the perceived velocity for Tyrone is even better than his actual velocity. He's a really good extension, big tall guy. Assuming his backspin on his four seamer. Oh. That was awkward for everybody. Baez slipped. And Cervelli got hit by that foul ball. Maybe both knees. Talked about the, the aggressive nature of Tyone early in the game. And it's paid off as he's sitting at 67 pitches here in the bottom of the sixth. It allows you to be less aggressive here later in the game. It'll put you away from some trouble if you're getting a little bit of a dicey situation. Hit for Baez. Infield single. 11 out of 19. Versus Tyone. And Frazier shading that way. Uh, able to make a play on that bouncing ball. Now Rizzo, who's 9 for 20. With two homers against Tyone. Anthony had the game winning RBI in the first inning yesterday. 17th to lead the NL. Four RBIs away from 100. Has a stretch going of 20 consecutive games, allowing three earned runs or less. The only other pitcher in Major League Baseball to accomplish that this year is Jacob DeGrom. He's done it 28 consecutive games. And I own the first Pirate pitcher to do it since Bob Friend back in 1963. Two and zero on Rizzo. Three 
balls, no strikes. Did not throw that pitch with a lot of conviction. I'm not aware of the fact that Rizzo's got good numbers against him. He is in a bit of a bind right now. Anthony, I'm sure, has the green light. First two are on base. Infield hit and a walk. And the batter is Kyle Schwarber. And Cardinals are still tied at one. And in the bottom of the fifth inning, Josh Hader is now pitching for the Brewers, who are going to be a starter by committee essentially tonight. Jennings got the first out, Peralta three and two thirds, Taylor Williams, and now Hader. Fouled out of play by Schwarber. You don't want to be passive in this situation. Pitch in the zone just didn't do anything with it. Rockies lead the Phillies 2 0, bottom of the third in Denver. Here's the 0 1. With a nifty 4 3 double play. Yeah, he opts not to use Newman here, and they almost get tangled up at second base. Takes it to the bag himself, airborne, and just a bit ahead of Schwarber there at first. Nice play. Guy who's uh, known more for his bat than his glove. Baez now at third, but two outs. And the batter is Chris Bryant. In the dirt, Baez always taking an aggressive lead at third base. And steal a run here on anything that gets away from Cervelli. The uh, Pirates throw a lot of wild pitches. Tyone does not. He's only had two this year. Pirates have a major league high 92 wild pitches. Oh, you know. They try to steal that one for him just below the knees. Good take by KB. It's a little cookie here on three and oh. Get over slider. I don't want to give in with a fastball. I'm not using that, uh, that spare ball to pick the five pin. Found it off himself. And it's three and two. It's fun to watch Baez it's just standing on the bases. And he's, before this at bat started, it looked like he was having some fun with Cervelli. He was putting his hands in front of him as if to say, if you don't block it, I'm coming. Yeah. Solid pitches. Yeah, solid pitches. <laughs> 
for ball four. Second walk of the inning. The batter now Hayward. Tommy LaStella. Walking into the on deck circle to hit for Hamels. So he was uh, very tentative with Rizzo, very tentative with KB. And now he's in a position where he's going to have to be a little bit more aggressive with Hayward here and see if Jason. To take advantage, looking for that fastball, maybe a two seamer. Outer third, trying to bang one into the gap in left center. They they bunch him out there in left center with Dickerson and Luke Low. First pitch to Jason is high. Has not been good in this inning. There's an assistant pitching coach, Justin Message. Their pitching coach, Ray Searage, last week had cervical neck surgery, so he is away from the club. Message filling in and delivered a message mm -hmm. to Jameson Tayo. It's M E C C A G E message. Returning from the DL, Hayward is three out of 12 with two doubles. Making him work here in the sixth inning. Tyon has a changeup, but he doesn't use it very often. Works against him a little bit, third time through the order. A nasty curveball, one of the better ones he's thrown tonight. Steven Brault is the left hander. Wow. Richard Rodriguez, the righty. Guys on the card not available tonight. 2 2 to Hayward. Strike three called on the inside. And Tyone gets out of it. Cubs have left five on base the last two innings. Pat Foley, the voice of the Blackhawks, will join us in the seventh.
Detroit Red Wings to the United Center. For another preseason matchup, coverage begins at 7.30 or stream the game on the NBC Sports app. Speaking of. First, Jaime Garcia in for Cole Hamels. Seventh inning, 3-1 Pirates. And the voice of the Blackhawks, Pat Foley, is with us. He'll sing the stretch tonight. How are you, Patrick? Awesome. Got to get the offense going here, but uh, it's uh, got a few outs left. Kevin Newman, the shortstop, leads it off and takes wide. Uh, we start on a somber note. Uh, our condolences to you and your family. Uh, the passing of your father, Bob, and uh, it's been a tough week. Well, thanks, Lenny. I appreciate uh, the kind words, and uh, he's in a better place. I mean, that's what I know. Uh, last few years have been kind of tough for him, so... Uh, I know one thing, I, I will not be singing solo tonight. I, there'll be a harmonizer, <laughs> I, I'm well aware of that. He was a great singer, I love to sing. He was at church every Sunday singing. Three balls, Ooh. no strikes on Newman. Uh, we had Chris Chelios here recently, and uh, he had uh, Stan Makita's sweater with him. And, uh, that was maybe my favorite stretch of the year so far. Good to have Shelley back with the Blackhawks. It was awesome. Too. Great yeah. move by the Blackhawks. Uh, he's excited about being back home, and it was a great move. I was watching the game that night. Nothing was happening for the Cubs. He does that, gets the Makita jersey out, and you score a couple runs, win the game. Yeah. Newman takes the walk, and uh, his. I saw his son uh, with the Red Wings the other yeah. day. Yeah. And I think uh, it's pretty likely Jake is going to play tomorrow. The Red Wings are here for an exhibition game. Oh, that's game, very so. cool. Oh, that yeah. Great, you know. and here's Ty on the pitcher. Now, J.D., did you know this? Uh, I don't and know. I didn't know this, and I'm a hockey guy. Uh, but up until the last couple of years, I didn't realize that teams actually have split squad games. I think the Kings or somebody a couple of days ago had a game at home and a game on the road. So it's a little like baseball. More teams are doing that every once in a while, and you're starting camp with 55 guys. Right. There's the bunt by Tyone. And will get the out. How, do you know how many players the Blackhawks have in their entire system? It's got to be 100? Oh, no, no, no. 80? I don't think you'd have that many other contracts. I mean, okay. There's guys that have been drafted that are not. Um, signed yet? Got it. And, okay. And that kind of thing. So, so you retain the rights to them up until a certain yes, point. Yes. Right. For a certain okay. amount of time. Right. Uh, but if there's a limit to how many guys you can have under contract. Which I forget what the number is. Okay. There's Frazier with a runner at second. Comes down 3-1 here in the seventh inning. Hamels tonight gave up. Three runs, two earned in his six innings of work. And it'll be the bullpen the rest of the way. You always get notes from your, your partner. Enzo's always watching us. And I you know the Cubs baseball every day has uh, helped get him through uh, his health issues. and. Being back in the booth with you, I think, has helped a lot too. And strike. Good arm action, Pat. Very nice. All right, now wait a minute. Look at that old check. Wait, wait a minute now. Uh, okay. See, well, yeah. he he was a little closer to the plate. I got to give him that. You I the, threw the radar gun away. You got the swing and miss. <laughs> <laughs> Two and O oh on Frazier. But you know, talking about his health stuff, um, and he's been very upfront about it. I, I do think. It's been cathartic for him to, to work as much as he can. Listen, and there was no question that last night, uh, last year, having that carrot in front of him uh, to come back before the season ended. Listen, you know, we, I think we, a lot of us know people who had to deal with the stuff he had to deal with. It is as tough as it gets, and uh, so he had that thing to look forward to, and it was so great to get him back at the end of last season. Now, and look at the guy's beating cancer. He's going to be a full-timer. He's going to be working on NBC. He'll be doing uh, our, almost all of our games, so I've, it's, uh, it's just been an absolute joy. And I, to your point, Lenny, him going public with his battle, I, I'm going to call it heroic. I, I think he has potentially saved some lives and, and uh, raised awareness about the need after a certain age to go get checked. Yep. So, God bless him. 
Three and one the count on Adam Frazier. JD said no more for his bat, but maybe the defensive play of the game turning a 4 3 double play in the sixth. And he bounces it foul. So, how does the team look in the preseason? I know it's hard because you know, some guys aren't in the lineup on a nightly basis and they're just trying to get their legs, but how yeah, does it feel? Well, it, it feels unsettled because you're not seeing your team yet. You know, I mean, we've, the Hawks have played three road games. Typically, not a lot of regulars play on the road. There's three home games this week, likely to be lineups closer to what you'll start the year with. But again, there's a few guys that have made some inroads during camp. Left in the left, here's Schwarber. On the second out. Is there a, a name or two, uh, either newbies altogether or guys that had a little time last year that you expect to see take a big step forward? Well, I, JD, at the start of the year, this uh, kid, Yoki Haru, who's a defenseman they drafted in the first round a couple of years ago, 19 years old. I think he's going to start the year here. Mm -hmm. And uh, shown some great skill uh, in the early part of camp. But uh, again, until you get into the real games where everybody you're playing against is an NHL, or it, I, I've right, always taken training camp with a game well, of salt. We do the same thing in spring training. You, know, you can get fooled in spring training, right. and I assume right. the same thing. Same Maybe thing even October you can take with a grain of salt, right? To a degree, yeah. right. But, but that's closer to the real deal than, yeah. you know, uh, September. Here comes Joe. Looks like. We've got a pitching change coming. As a right handed hitting Pablo Reyes is due. So we'll step aside. Steve Ciszek when we come back. Pain relief. The Chicago Cubs. This will be a 75th appearance. A very busy Steve Ciszek. Yeah, he's been busy and he's also been very good. 2.28 earned run average, 67 innings of work. He's allowed just 42 base hits. Struck out 75, walked 25, scoreless inning on Saturday against the White Sox. That was the first time he had pitched in a week. Runner at second base. Two outs, top seven. And we're with the 2014 Foster Hewitt Memorial Award winner, Pat Foley. That's Hockey's highest honor for a broadcaster. It was so great to be able to share that with the family, boy. That's what it's all about. Been some greats. Uh, your guy, we've talked about this before, but when you grew up listening to hockey, you thought to yourself, I want to be who? Boy, Pettit. I mean, there's there's only one name in Chicago. Uh, absolute legend and a wonderful guy. I got to meet him uh, after he was done with the Blackhawks and tremendous guy. 
That is in the left. And the Pirates will add to their lead. Pablo Reyes with an RBI single. Another big two out hit for the Pirates. And the story of this ball game. I thought KB was going to be able to knock that one down, keep it in the infield. But the young Pablo Reyes, a bit of a dagger here, just beyond his reach. Good effort. So when you start this business, and I tell you, I tell young broadcasters, I said you're probably going to pick somebody and you're going to steal all their, their, their phrases. Comedians do it when they're in their teens. But then you find your own voice, right? And when I think of Pat Foley, I think you are Pat Foley all the time. And it's the highest compliment I can pay you, but it does take time to find your voice, right? Well, you're very kind. Thanks, Lenny. I'll tell you this the first hockey game I ever did at Michigan State University, I said a shot and a goal. That was Lloyd's call. That's all I listened to when yeah. I was a kid. Sure. When I heard the tape, I'm going, what are you doing? That's Lloyd's line. You can't. Uh, well, sorry. that was uh, Doug's line, too. Doug, the longtime uh, Milwaukee Admirals voice. Uh, Lloyd's son had that uh -huh. call, too. Uh, worked in Milwaukee for a long time. But, yeah, you know what? You know what you know. You know what you grow up with. Um, I think it's cool, too, that you might have a little Lloyd Pettit in your call, and there may be some people out there who never heard him and so you're, you're passing along to, to the new generation. Well, a couple of things that he would say once in a while, oh, I, I love to drop him in. We lose a puck and gain a face-off. You know, just sure. stuff that he would say. And yeah. uh, yeah. I think of him every time I do it. No doubt. Swing and a miss, two and two. And Josh Bell. I would imagine you, you, you've talked about young broadcasters, and, you know, we got people asking us, how do you get in the business stuff? And great advice that you would give. The other thing I would always tell kids, do it all. I mean, if you want to be a newscaster, go do a sports cast or go spin records or go do an interview show. Anything you can do to get in front of a microphone and get comfortable with all of it would serve you well. Experience is paramount. Former players every once in a while tell us, ah, it's easy. You just go up and you talk. All right, you do it. <laughs> and then they're paralyzed. <laughs> It's easy to do it. It's not easy to be good at. 3 2 with a runner moving in ball four. Danny Gallivan was my guy. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because yeah. I grew up on, on the uh, Canadian border of northern New York. We got, uh, we got uh, Canadians all the time. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, he was, yeah, he was extraordinary. The puck in the paraphernalia. <laughs> the cannonading drive. The cannonading right? drive, that's right. I was so proud of myself when I first saw Dennis Savard do a 360. I didn't know what to do the first time. The second time, oh, spinorama. I dropped that. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so proud of myself. About 10 years later, I'm reading a book. Danny Gallivan used to say that. With, with uh, Serge. Serge with Savard. Serge Savard, right, yeah. yeah. I like didn't know a, that. It's a Savard thing. They all spin. Yeah. <laughs> Savelli takes wide for a ball. Caught some baseball too. Very different sport. Well, and you used a line a moment ago, Lenny. Uh, people talk about keeping up with hockey, which is difficult. I think baseball is way tougher to be good at. It's just different, you know. Totally. It, it really is. Um, you've got to memorize a lot of names every night, line combinations, and you've got to be right on it. You can't look down at your notes. As in baseball, we've got a, a lot of gaps to fill. Therein is the challenge, and I think what separates the good ones from the great ones, uh, you know, in, in your sport. And by the way, yeah, I got to memorize names and numbers and got to be sharp with all that, but hey, there's a lot of we got it, they got it, let's go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one, and Cervelli. You don't have to memorize 19 and 88. You always know when those guys have the puck. Absolutely. I, to watch Patrick Kane stick handle, I mean, he is, he really is, he, you know, he's Javier Baez on, on the ice. Great call, Lenny. Yeah, he's a playmaker. So fun to watch. And, and 
your guy playing shortstop tonight. I, I hope he is the MVP. He's certainly the most exciting player in baseball to watch. He's a treat. And when 88's got the puck on his stick, ooh, pretty likely something special is going to happen. Three balls, two strikes on a tough hitter. Cervelli has homered, walked, singled, knocked in two, and scored twice. Check trying to keep this game close. And it's foul. I have a, a process question for you. So we sit up here doing a game with our scorebook. Do you, do you, when you're doing a hockey game, do you is there a, the, the notes? Do you take notes during the game, or there, is there any reason to? I do write down the scoring put goals and assists, and I write down penalties. I have a little sheet in front of me. Sheet, yeah, so so similar good. to what you guys, it's not as consistent. You're mm. keeping track of every batter. So I just, you know, penalties and, and scoring plays, I keep track of. Ground ball to second. Bell jumped over it. Murphy was the first, and that'll do it. All right, Pat, here we go. Uh-oh. Time to hear your singing voice. <laughs> and it's brought to you by St. Xavier Tonight's University. Conductor take me out to the ball game. Blackhawks broadcaster Pat Foley. All right, Cup fans, let's get the offense going here. Let me hear you. Good and loud. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. Two thousand nineteen season. Visit Cubs.com slash deposits for all the details. Tyone still working. Pinch hitter Tommy Lestella takes a strike. Four to one Pittsburgh. We had a note earlier that don't want to repeat, but you give this guy three plus runs of support and he's deadly. Stella brings out. Away here in the Cubs seventh. Yeah, and uh, you know, not just uh, Tyone. Their their pitching has been outstanding. It's a four-game set. We're going to see three guys, three of the four, have ERAs in the ones here in the month of September. So it, it sounds easy enough. Uh, you know, go four and three on this homestand. You would force the Brewers to win out, uh, to force a tie. Um, so it looks good, but you still got to go out and win. You're going to have to beat some pitchers who are throwing the ball very well. So the Rockies blowing out the Phillies early. The uh, Brewers lead the Cardinals 3 2. In the bottom of the sixth in St. Louis. 
Let's take a look at uh, what lies ahead. Uh, Archer Nova Williams for the Pirates. Archer with a 338 this month. Uh, but look at Nova 110 Williams 152 and he's been good for an extended period of time. Victor. Tyone had to work around an infield hit, two walks in the sixth. Driven to left, but easy for Dickerson. Two outs. I mentioned earlier a couple of right handers unavailable. They're on the card. Keone Kella has been shut down, and Edgar Santana. Dealing with a forearm slash elbow issue, so they are listed, but they will not pitch in this series. Probably some combination of Rodriguez, Crick, and Vasquez to finish this game for Rudy, depending on how much he gets out of Tyone here. Cardinals have put up three in the sixth to take the lead. Jose Martinez with a homer and then Pablo, uh, Marcel Ozuna with a two run shot. We put Pablo Reyes and Marcel Ozuna together to make Pablo Ozuna former big leaguer. Randy Rosario and Alec Mills up in the bullpen. to deep center and the Cubs go in order in the seventh trailing four to one. Sammy, presented by Elgin Hyundai, an exclusive documentary about the legendary home run race, including interviews with Sosa, McGuire, and many more. Next Monday at seven, only on NBC Sports in Chicago. Buried the lead on the Cardinals' home runs. Josh Hader gave up both. Wow. Four-three, St. Louis, bottom six. Here it's four-one, Pittsburgh, and Randy Rosario. And, uh, Garcia Ciszek and now Rosario coming in behind Cole Hamels tonight. Randy 4 0 with a 374. Ferguson, Osuna, Uplo, the scheduled batters, here in the top of the eighth.
lefty lefty matchup and Dickerson takes up and in. And he's 24 years of age. Dominican Republic. Had a nice year. And the batters hitting just 169 against him. Although he has not been used strictly as a lefty specialist, that has been his strength. Person might need a new bat. He got knocked around by the White Sox on Friday. A third of an inning, he allowed five hits and three runs. So the ERA jumped from 318 to 374. Yeah, and it's easy to say, don't. Too invested in a reliever's ERA, but that's that's the first number everybody sees. Yeah, if there was a stat, if there was a how many times he gets the job done stat, that would be. <laughs> they don't can be have somewhat little, subjective to dig in and do a deep dive. They don't have an asterisk on your baseball reference page. It says uh, this particular year he had two bad outings which skewed his ERA. Yeah. Uh, yeah he, had a, he had a 450 but he gave up six runs in this one appearance and if, if not for that he would have had a 310. He's, he's had a few clunkers in the second half hasn't been quite as sharp. Overall it's been a nice year for the rookie. Say in his time with the Cubs, and he's been up and down a lot. He's he's been in and out of the circle of trust of manager Joe Madden, more in than out. Hit pretty well, but way foul to right. Sox have clinched home field through the entire postseason as long as they're in it. And franchise record 106th win. Lined to Zobras. The batter Osuna. And Joe will make a change. He's got Alec Mills ready. And we're back in a minute.
Kyle Fries call to the pen brings Alec Mills into the contest. Four games with the big club this year, a couple of starts, a couple of times out of the pen, a 3.07 ERA for 14 and two thirds innings of work. Not a lot of work, but good numbers. 18 strikeouts in those 14 innings. Two scoreless in Arizona on the 18th. Colin Moran for Osuna. Pretty good movement on his fastball, a little bit of a crossfire delivery. A real hard thrower, averaging 90 miles per hour. Slider, change, and curve. The A's have clinched a wild card spot. The story they have been. I like them a lot in spring training. I wasn't in on them enough to say they'd be a playoff team. I thought they'd be pretty decent. Yeah, for a while there, the Mariners were the you know, the darlings of the American League, the team that people thought might. Playing the spot, but they've dropped off. The A's have continued to play good baseball for a long time. They're 50 and 31 in their home ballpark. That would be the Coliseum. Moran strikes out. Coliseum would probably rank number 30 among all the big league ballparks in just about every category. I like it. I don't dislike it. They have uh, a from, rabid from, fan from base, not a big one, but uh, the fans make it fun. And that ballpark reminds me of my youth. When you had the all purpose stadiums all over the place. It's really the last one of its kind in that regard. So. I kind of dig it. What's its official name now? I think it's just Oco the Coliseum. Or just Coliseum. Maybe it's it's the changed a lot. Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. You can kind of hear Howard Cosell. The Oakland Alameda yeah. County Coliseum. Yep. Let's put it this way. I like the Coliseum when the plumbing is working. <laughs> the backed up plumbing gives it a special charm. <laughs> I do wish they'd get rid of Mount Davis. They got rid of all of that. They used to have really, uh, beautiful views. Three one to Luke Lowe is ball four. And he's on for the first time. Luke Lowe has shown decent patience in his brief major league time. He's trying to fill that crossfire heater to the outside corner to keep it on the edge. And the Mariners, they have the longest playoff drought, I believe, in all the major sports. Last time they were in the postseason was 2001. Baez will flip Murphy at the bag. And of course, Luke Lowe, bottom of the eighth, getting late. Cubs trail four to one.
solo homer by Cole Hamels. The Cubs hoping that's not it for them tonight. Because of the last four games played in Pittsburgh, the Cubs scored one time in all four, and they were all solo home runs. Very weird. Yeah. Here's Richard Rodriguez for Tyone. Rodriguez, a rookie, having a nice year. 2.43, the ERA. 60 times he's come out of the pen. Well, make it 61 with tonight. His 85 strikeouts are a rookie record for a Pirate reliever. Short DL stint in June with right shoulder discomfort. As he faces Ben Zobrist. Ben is 0 for 3 tonight. 90 to 93 with a running fastball and a swing and miss slider for the rookie right hander. Popped him up. This is playable for Bell in foul territory, and he has it for the first out. The big story, of course, is the Cubs in pursuit of yet another division championship. But we'll be keeping an eye on the batting race as Obris battles down here in the final few days. Anthony Rizzo still has a shot to drive in 100 runs. He's sitting on 96. Of course, Javi Baez locked in this battle for the MVP. It appears to be a, a two man race, he and Yelich. Freddie Freeman will get a lot of consideration. Matt Carpenter. Alan Arenado, I guess, is still be in the mix a little bit, but the two guys that are creating the most buzz. Second in home runs, first in extra base hits and RBIs. Yelich in batting average. P.S. slugging, all good numbers for Yelich. Both steal bases, both are plus defenders. I think Javi has a reasonable chance to win it. I think he has a great chance to win it. I, I mean, if Yelich were to win it, I don't think anybody could make the case that, that Javi got ripped off. Yeah, I guess that the, the question is going to be among the voters you know, how many will not vote for either of those two guys, right? So, with the point system, that matters. A couple of votes for a couple of other guys you mentioned. I think the vote's going to be pretty close. Maybe I'm wrong. Two retired here in the Cubs eight. Well, he missed a spot by a wide margin, but he still got his man. Strike on Rizzo. Anthony reached on a walk in the sixth. Go for two on the night. Both starters 
with quality outings tonight. Hamill six innings, two runs earned, three runs overall. Tyone seven innings, one run. Hit hard at the middle, diving stop. Newman targets by Bell, however, and Rizzo reaches. It'll be a base hit for Rizzo. That was one impressive swing of the bat. This thing is armpit high, and he gets on top of it. Newman has a very good glove man. He's had some issues with his throws since coming to the big leagues. Now, this is not an easy play at all. It's a hurried throw. He didn't have a very good grip on it. Just kind of fling it over there and hope for the best. Different look to the batting order tonight with Schwarber right behind Rizzo. Bryant moved down to the sixth spot. Waits on deck. <laughs> Strike at the bottom of the zone. He's done a nice job tonight cradling some of those borderline pitches. Oh and two. Oh, by the way, uh, back on the MVP boat. Mm -hmm. I bet you somebody's going to have to ground as their MVP. He will get a vote or two. Think he'll, well, I think he'll so. get first place votes. Yes. And there's wars over the line. Mm -hmm. There's a much war in the um, National League. Yep. So we go to the ninth. Still four to one, Pirates. True moment. Adam Fraser with a big 4 3 double play turn. That was in the sixth inning. Comes a two on it, nobody out. And that helped Tyone eventually get out of it. With no damage. Yeah, it was a stretch where Tyone was scuffling a little bit with his command bias, a single to lead off the inning. He walked Rizzo. And then got that big double play. Also walked Chris Bryant in that inning. Struck out uh, Jason Hayward to end the inning. The previous inning, the Cubs left the bases loaded. A couple opportunities couldn't cash in. The Pirates, on the other hand, have scored four runs. With, uh, two outs. Kevin Kramer, pinch hitter, flies to left. 
Hey Cubs fans the Cubs offer free remote parking and shuttle service for night and weekend games and a free bike check located near the Addison Red Line station. Pace Express buses also are available from Hillside and Rolling Meadows. Check out available transportation and parking options at Cubs.com slash transportation. Pitching change in the ninth 4 1 Pirates. Home screen icons and features such as live radio broadcast, the MLB.tv game of the day, pitch tracking, in game highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. Brian Dunsing, veteran left hander, losing Adam Frazier. Nobody on one out, ninth inning. Cubs trail four to one. Curve is over for a strike. A chopper behind the bag at first. Is a unassisted. Brewers and Cardinals now tied 4 4, top of the seventh. Got fans rooting for the Cardinals, huh? Feels a little strange, but I think you have to do it, right? Yeah. The Brewers are your closest. Dogs living with cats kind of moment. Uh, trailer. <laughs> In the air down the left field line, and it is. Is gone. A home run for Pablo Reyes. That is his second, and it's five to one. And it's another two out run for the Pirates. Two outs, nobody on in the first when Bell singled before Cervelli homered. Two out double, Osuna in the sixth to plate Cervelli. Two out hit Reyes in the seventh to score Newman. That is not to say that the Pirates are especially virtuous because they score runs with two outs or the Cubs are flawed because they've given up runs with two outs. It's just right. something I noticed and we're pointing out it happens. It's not like you're going to go have a huddle. Hey we need to work on our two out game. A fielder's choice off the bat of Christian Yelich. 
Have tied that game in the seven. So Josh Josh Hader gave up the lead. He gave up two home runs. Jordan Hicks throwing 102 103 gave up the game tying run. Tough league. Yeah Hicks two of the nastiest pitchers in baseball have allowed runs in that game. Hicks throws pitches like I've never seen before. Those 104 mile an hour sinkers. Bell strikes out and will head to the bottom of the ninth. Cubs need a big rally. It's five to one. Coverage starts at 7, or you can stream the game live on the NBC Sports app. Yvonne Nova and Jose Quintana. Probables for game three. Felipe Vasquez will work in a non save situation with a four run lead. 36 saves, 41 tries for a hard throwing left hander, a 2 8 2 ERA, 85 strikeouts in 67 innings. Last ball in the upper 90s. Dazzling changeup. So good slider. No fun to hit against this guy. Ryan Hayward and a pinch hitter. And a homer tonight against Clayton Kershaw. It's a Kershaw Robbie Ray matchup. Two to one Arizona in the fourth inning. Rockies could pull within a half a game of the Dodgers. Cycle watch from the desert. And the Diamondbacks eliminated from playoff contention, but trying to spoil the Dodgers season. They got swept by the Rockies, who lead 9 0 now in the seventh against the Phillies. Bryant with a base hit in the left center. Lead off single for Chris. Rally caps are on. And perhaps the rally. Has begun. Solid single for KB. He walked last time, so one out of three plus a walk tonight for Chris. Last 
Martinez to Hayward and a high fly down the right field line. That ball's going to be caught wow. by Reyes. Typically off the bat of the left hander that ball is going to curl toward the corner but it actually came back and I think the wind grabbed it. And Reyes. Had to make a very late adjustment in his first game here at Wrigley Field. Yeah, it looks like the wind has picked up a little bit too. Albert Almora will pitch hit for Dunson. Pitch strike. Change up at 89 from Vasquez. This one hit well. And it will be caught by Luplo. Two down. Will be up to Victor Caratini. If you don't come back and, and beat a guy like Vasquez, you hope to make him throw a lot of pitches and possibly render him unavailable for tomorrow, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah, it's much Two more. Outs six pitches. Much more important in a four game series early on to. Got to make them use a lot of bullpen. What's left to accomplish for the Pirates? Well, they're 78 and 76. You know they'd like to finish the year with a winning mark. They are going to finish in fourth place. Two strikes on Caratini. The kick, the pitch nearly hit him. Load him up and get Bodie up there. Vasquez has it. The Pirates take the opener behind Jamison Tyone. Five won the final. And this bizarre trend continues for the Cubs against the Pirates. One run on a solo home run. This time it comes from Cole Hamels. Is Tyone able to handcuff the Cubs for most of the night? They had a couple of chances there in the middle innings. We talked about it there in the uh, beginning of the inning. A big chance in the fifth. Left the bases loaded. Another opportunity in the sixth. Frazier turned a big double play, kind of cleaned things up. And uh, Tyone and company did the rest. 